I think we're ready to go. Let's do this thing. All right, guys. Welcome to the Doubles 2 Podcast. I'm here with another special guest. Um, this guy was recently on the news for his new business that he um, has started. Uh, he was a member of the pitch. He did really well in the pitch, and I'm excited to introduce you guys to Aaron Perry. Yeah. Awesome. Hello. Thanks for having yeah. me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to talk today. Uh, one, just more business focus, mm-hmm. which will be exciting, and uh, just like this past week has kind of been crazy. There's a lot for sure. going on. Just run over like what happened this week. Yeah. 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 So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, my business is ultralight running. Yeah. And um, this past week, one of my friends, I was sitting down with him to kind of talk over just going back and forth. He's in the same stage as me yeah. uh, of kind of starting up a business. And he told me that I was on the news. I was like, Oh, interesting. And I thought it was the video I actually sent to you for t- to kind of do some promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it, Turns out it wasn't. So he, he he pulled up the news source, and I was like, "Wow, that's like Dayton news." Yeah. And uh, I pulled up Ultralight Running, um, and my website came up, of course. But then beneath it had different articles about my business, and I was just caught so off guard. So it, the irony was, they had posted it like five days ago, and I found out like oh, really yesterday. five days ago. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So I was like, nobody told me about this, but it was so exciting to see it. That's so, so cool. Yeah. yeah. So that was the uh, the Dayton Business Journal. Mm-hmm. which is under like the American Business Journal, which I was looking up last night when I was talking to you. Yeah. Apparently, it's the number one metropolitan business focus wow. like news group in the country. So That's cool. I didn't know that's that. That's pretty sick. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I guess we could talk a little background, um, like how you got into running, um, mm-hmm. just a little bit about yourself. Like I know um, you've done a bunch of marathons. You talked about that in uh, our presentation um, Monday in class. Mm-hmm. So just want to expand on that a little bit yeah so i played soccer for i think over a decade so soccer was my main main thing um and then i graduated right rewind so i was playing soccer junior senior year of high school yeah yeah. and i was like man this is going to come to an end but i love being active and i wasn't gonna play for college um Mm -hmm. and so i was like well what can i do and i at the time i hated running because as you all know like the running portion of practice is is a punishment And so I'm like, well, let, let's give it a shot. So I went out, started running, and I got a runner's high for. And for those of you who don't know, it's just where you feel like you could go forever. So nothing hurts. You're like in like a flow state. Yeah. And I got into that state and ran a half marathon off the couch. Wow. Um, later that night, I didn't sleep. Was thrown up. Like was terrible. So <laughs> I'm not saying I recommend that, but yeah, I did that. I was like, man, there's something. There's something to this. Yeah. And uh, I, I go into my senior year of high school, and November sixth, I, I ran my first uh, marathon. The Garmin okay. Marathon in Kansas, where I'm from. Nice. And uh, from there, I slowly wanted to like amp it up. Mm. So after my uh, after my senior year, I traveled around the U.S. living out of my car, and eventually went over to the Grand Canyon and did a rim to rim. So that's 25 miles across the Grand Canyon. Started at 5:30 at night. So it's during the summer, so not the best time to do it. But ran that. Um, long story short, I was going to do rim to rim to rim, which is a 50 miles for going back, but um, started hallucinating and didn't didn't go to do according to plan. So I just did the rim to rim, and then later on I did a ultra marathon, so a 50k, which is around 31 miles. And then this past summer, after my freshman year of college, I did a half Ironman, okay. so it's a 70.3, so 1.2 mile swim into a 56 mile bike and a half marathon. Well. And then coming up here uh, this coming summer, I'm doing the Leadville 100 mile race in Leadville. So. Nice. Very stoked for that. Yeah, that's awesome. So. Yeah, because I uh, we met in a digital marketing class. I think mm-hmm. it was the first contact, yeah. um, which uh, Carrie Oberbrunner here at Cedar University. Um, it's put on a great class for us, which just ended today, which I is know, crazy. unfortunately. Yeah. So that that are you in any of his classes in the spring? I'm in. He's offering three, right? Yeah, uh, creative problem solving, content creation, and the accelerator. Yeah, so I'm in all of those except. Um, creative problem solving okay so yeah. those two yeah 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 I, I was only able to get into creative problem solving i know oh, seriously yeah i bet just, he let you in just with more of the like my space with like my classes oh i got you so, yeah that makes yeah. sense like i guess i could technically do the accelerator because two credits yeah but he said that you could do um his marketing class and he would like turn it down to like two credit hours and he wouldn't assign oh yeah like, kind of like a semi-audit type thing yeah, yeah. yeah so you could do it i don't know how many credits that's you're taking, true but yeah it's an option yeah See what happens, but I know uh, I know his content creation class expanded. It doubled. I know. It started at thirty. It's at sixty now. That's so crazy. Which is crazy. His name's gotten like 
so much publicity. I think everybody in that class really like amped him up, and yeah. rightfully so. He's, he's a great, great teacher. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the social game. He's the only professor I know that's really done a lot with social, mm -hmm. whether good or bad, just compared to the other guys. But it's uh, it's definitely helped. Yeah. He uh, well, he got all of his stories about your news thing, were all reposted by Doctor White. No way. That's so Yeah, sick. all, all okay. of Carrie's stories were reposted on Dr. White's yeah, Instagram. I don't follow Dr. White. I probably should, but... Probably. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so it was like your name, and then... I th that's why I thought it was Fox News, because oh, oh, Carrie accidentally mm -hmm. tagged Fox News. Oh, he did? <laughs> hey, I'll take it, though. Fox <laughs> News it. sees that, yeah, picks up the yeah. story. I, I ain't complaining. But yeah, so he ac he thought it was Fox News, because it's like the same... Oh, for sure. Same color scheme. Like the opening. It's like yeah. the whole, whole thing, but it was... I mean, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, that's sick. But uh, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, your journey with running, yeah, you had the, the marathons and you got into that. What brought you to want to start a company about this specific product? Was there something um, you just felt you were lacking or what, what sparked that interest? Yeah, so this is my is fourth business I started. Okay. And the prior three were to create money so I didn't have to have a, a high school job. Okay. And I'll, I'll just be completely realistic with you, with you. Like none of them worked out because yeah, yeah. they were all just to make money. Yeah. And so there wasn't really no passion besides the money mm -hmm. aspect. However, this has completely shifted. Yeah. And so I love ultra marathons. Um, mm -hmm. That's like my passion and, or just any distance sport. Yeah. And so I, I was like, there's really no good or reputable ultra marathon oriented brand. So like you have Hoka with their speed goats, which is just their trail shoes, mm -hmm. which can be like four ultra marathons. Like you can use them, but like there's no company like four ultra marathon. Okay. And so I was like, man, this is my passion. I love business. I love like all sorts of things when it comes to it. And so I was like, well, let's, let's like dive into that and yeah. try and create value for my community and the thing mm -hmm. that I absolutely love. Okay. So that's kind of the main main kind of hmm. motive behind it okay so the other brands would use they say more like casual running and like the shorter distance running there's nothing for that like ultra like long distance running yeah so <coughs> an ultra marathon is any distance longer than 26.2 miles okay so technically 26.3 miles is an ultra marathon hmm. now that's not like universal so your distances are 50K, 100K, 50 mile, and 100 mile. And then you can go up to Moab 240, transcontinental races across the U.S. So when you go to those distances, the <coughs> – so what's the right word? It's the quality of the material has to be superior. Yeah. Because those distances – and a lot of these aren't road races. So when you do these things, it's through mountains. It's yep. through – like some, there's river crossings in some. So it's, it's really like rough terrain. Mm -hmm. And – you like the thing you change out is your socks and your shoe. You don't change anything else. Hmm. And so when you're running and, and I, I wanted to create something that had that high quality feature to it. Yeah. And a lot of these other brands, they're, they're carbon plated shoes for like tempo runs or race day. Yeah. And so a lot of them just are oriented towards the half marathon and the marathon. Yeah. And it's harder to, I feel like it's harder for those companies to branch out. Cause that's like their main target audience. Yeah. And I was like, well, let's just go, let's go straight to my niche and let's yeah. start talking yeah. to them. So, yeah. Interesting. And so for those long distances, you said you switch out socks and shoes. Mm -hmm. And so the carbon plates, do they, they not really work for the ultra marathon? Like just yeah. the structure? So the carbon plates purely to like propel you forward. Yeah. And so that's what like Choga used on his sub two, um, two hour marathon. Yeah. So they're really fast paced shoes. And when you're doing an ultra marathon, you're holding like a, holding a 10 minute per mile pace is fast. Technically. Yeah. I mean, depending on the train. Okay. So like it just, it's, they're completely different, mm -hmm. uh, shoes for different terrain. Okay. I'd say in races. And so then you'd envision like uh, hopefully possibly expanding into those other areas, just everything ultra mm -hmm. and marathon. Yeah. So the main, and I kind of emphasize this on pit on the pitch, but doing ultra marathon running, uh, and having that be the first thing and then branch off to ultra marathon, like triathlons or swimming, okay. things like that. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the pitch. That was, uh, I knew you before then, obviously, because mm -hmm. of the class, but uh, that whole event was, was awesome. That was amazing. my first pitch. I was able to help with the content team for that. Um, so what was your experience with the pitch and what inspired you to actually join it and uh, present in it? Yeah, so I had my company before the pitch. Yeah. And so I, I already had the funding for it in regards to, 
I originally want to save up for a truck. Hmm. And so I, was, I had saved throughout college and I'm like, when you buy a truck, it's a depreciating asset. Yeah. And I'm just like, let's not do that. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's make it into something that can, that's better. Mm-hmm. And so I started using my funding that I had for my truck towards my business. And then I heard about the pitch and I knew about it last year. Yeah. Never really took any interest because I knew that the things that I was doing weren't good enough to go on the pitch. This year I, it was different. And I was like an extra thousand bucks, like let's put in some work and let's yeah. make this happen. Um, signed up for it, did the prelims, passed the prelims. I went to the professors who kind of were like the prejudging uh, ones and yeah. went to go talk with them. They gave me pointers and then talked with my mentor about yeah. like what I should add. And he gave me some pointers. And then from there, just went on stage, put on 40 hours of practice to get the presentation to where it was and yeah. being able to speak about it uh, like I did. And so it was a lot of work. Play second, uh, which is great. I mean, 500 bucks, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. I wish I placed first, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, the product that got first was, I think it, what was impressive and maybe what won, which I don't know. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, still yeah. an amazing product was just how they already had so many sales yeah. and were international and stuff like that. Well, they had patents too. And yeah, so that's true. It was it was, And you could see good. the eyes light up as soon as they said like, oh, this could be patent for medical mm-hmm. and have insurance pay for it. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's huge. if you can get into that, yeah. you're set. To even bring that up in conversation about your companies. Yeah, so I think awesome. that was a big thing for you. It was... Like you have a legitimate product with a niche, mm-hmm. niche. Like, is it niche or niche? I don't what know. Do you say? <laughs> don't ask me. I'm <laughs> dyslexic. I, I don't know this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I always, yeah. I can never. I don't know what to say for that. But yeah, it, I think yours was so specific that that mm-hmm. was interesting to them instead of just like a broad like, oh, we have a product thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, would you say beyond like 500 bucks, which is still awesome, mm-hmm. the the plub is publicity around it the networking and what followed after mm-hmm. that was probably the most beneficial would you say to your thing and that's why i did it yeah is because i knew i was talking to my mentor and he's like man if you if you place dead last like your name's still out there yeah and so i was like you're so right and so i i did it and and shout out to a guy named by alex Ramosi. he's a okay. huge guy that i've been following for two three years now and he's getting big recently and I, I watched his presentation. He launched his new book, yeah. and I signed up for it like two months in advance to like get access to it. And I watched his presentation, mm-hmm. and everything. In, his book's called "A um, Hundred Million Dollar Leads," oh, yeah, yeah. and everything he outlined in the book he did for his book launch. And so throughout the whole presentation, he's like, "Yeah, this is what I did. Here's that in this book." And so I kind of uh, modeled my presentation off that. And so he he, and the reason why I say that is. At the very end, I say, hey, here's this uh, coupon co- or coupon, a discount code. And here we're doing pre-orders right now. It's just for you guys on the live stream and here in person. Nobody else is getting it. And I tease that at the very beginning to keep, keep them in. And I got that idea from him. Mm-hmm. And so, like, after the fact, I got a few orders. It was, I think, maybe five orders. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's, pretty, pr- that's pretty solid. Especially since you're so specific with your product. There's mm-hmm. not, like a bunch of ultra marathon runners or runners mm-hmm. in general. I know there's a running yeah. club, but the yeah. distance is the yeah. niche, right? Yeah. So I got the publicity from that. And then I actually had, um, an angel investor who I had on a call with him. So okay. he, he contacted me via my website and he was like, Hey man, I love what you're doing. I love like you as a guy, cause to be able to go up there on stage and then present like you did, he's like, like mad respect for you. Yeah. And he wanted to invest in my company just from the ground up. Okay. He's a former CU grad, mechanical engineering, mm. and hopped on the call. I declined purely because I'm reading a book called um, The Lean Startup, okay. and I have a certain amount of money I can spend on this business. Yeah. And if I get, I don't know, he didn't offer a set amount, but say, for example, $10,000. Yeah. My mind goes everywhere. Yeah. I don't know what to spend with that money. And so I start getting distracted by the amount of money they have and where mm. to put it than actually using what I have and then creating something from that yeah. maybe later on the line like i'm i was still shooting him emails about the new stuff yeah. and so great guy love to stay connected with him yeah so that level of publicity was i was caught so off guard by and i was still am so thankful for that mm-hmm. okay so you're saying um with your startup you want to stay on the lean side with the money just like creativity within your bounds of finances mm-hmm. just to see what you can do within that yeah so Everything that I've done so far, 
I've done myself. So okay. I haven't done like the design work for the hat. Mm -hmm. um, I, I designed all that. I contacted five different distributors and designers, mm -hmm. paid for all that. And they, they manufactured it, sent me different prototypes. I then chose my manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And then from there, kind of critiqued it. Like the website design, that was all me. Like I was just learning how to do it. Uh, marketing, doing SEO, um, doing uh, email marketing. That's something I'm huge on right now, trying to figure yeah. all that stuff out. So learning how to do email marketing, marketing in general. I'll be honest with you, like Instagram, I always had it, never posted. Yeah. Now that's changing because I know how crucial that is. Yeah. So learning how to post, learning what to say, the hooks, the things to draw people in and to create value on your page, yeah. which is huge and create yeah. value just in general. But that's, those are a lot of things I'm learning. And, and I think that's so great because I, I heard a quote from Alex Formosi and he said, specify in projects and generalize in skill. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning a lot of these skills that yeah. then make me more um, marketable when it comes to trying to do an internship. Yeah. And then my, my project is my business and sort of specializing that. So that's, yeah. I think the lean startup method is crucial right now. Yeah. Yeah. You're learning, like you're building your own product, but you're obtaining skills in like every area, specifically marketing, which I would argue. And I've talked about this, I don't know on the pod, but with people, it's like, it's almost the recession proof mm -hmm. job for sure in marketing. Cause you, even if there's a recession or if there's a depression in economies or whatever, you still need the market to sell what yeah. you can. So I think it's it's an there's like crucial skills to have. Well, even even the person you become when you start something like this yeah. is you you gain those skills and then say my business is ripped out from underneath me, like I no longer have access to any. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like I had those skills that got me to that point, mm -hmm. and to have those skills is they're irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. You have them and nobody can take them from you. They can yep. take your business, they can take your money, but they can't take your your skills. And so I think that's that's crucial for yeah. sure. Yeah, and so a little bit about, you talk about email marketing. Mm -hmm. I know you had consulted with Oberbrunner, Dr. Mm -hmm. Oberbrunner, about yeah. that, and then uh, Cooper as well. Cooper, Cooper. was kind of with that. Yeah. How has that worked for you guys and, like, working with Cooper? Because mm -hmm. he runs gloves. Gloves. Uh, gloves, which uh, is, uh, what exactly? Like, they're mittens. Yeah. But no, I'll plug him right now, yeah, for sure. Him. What's Let's the exact it. science? And so all that? Yeah. it's gloves, G-L-U-B-Z.com. So check them out. Um, he did the pitch last year, yeah. and I'm not sure what place he uh, placed, but he was actually the one that also showed me the news bit. Okay. And his whole thing is with running gloves, they're either have your fingers separated, yeah, or they have, um, it's kind of like a mitten, so your thumb's still out. And his whole concept was the way your hands stay warm is by keeping your fingers together. And mm -hmm. both those methods keep your fingers separately, yeah. even the, the mitten. And so his whole thing was he wanted to create a to put a visual image like a sock around your hand but with like waterproof material on the outside and cushion on the inside and yeah. then kind of um to make it windproof and so that was his whole company and he's doing so well right now like he him and i are on the like i said on the same page of starting up this business or different businesses and in the same market relatively running and we've been working on email marketing because that's we're something trying to get dialed in and yeah. he's he's doing awesome so shout out to him yeah i know um in the last day of q school he was talking about the leads he's been generating mm -hmm. and i've talked with him a few times um like the email list that he's started to create is like it's getting so crazy it's, is he at a thousand yet he said i talked to him yesterday he was like at i think 900 900 but the thing is what's yeah. crazy is is he didn't pay a single dollar it was to all, get to yeah. those those emails and to then like, it's crazy because you can get a thousand emails and then have like 500 B runners and 500 B just athletes or not even part of your, your market. Yeah. These 900 are all runners yeah. because everything he sent out is to the running community. Yeah. And so he has 900 runners on his email marketing. I'm like, dude, that's absolute gold without spending a yeah. single dime. So wow. it's awesome. And so do you have your own email list or you mm -hmm. can, okay. Yeah. How is that looking for you? Yeah. So him and I both use... Um, a platform called Strava. Yeah. And so it's kind of social media for runner or for athletes. And you can okay. just post about your runs and you can join different clubs. And so we've been posting research surveys to actually get some market research. Mm -hmm. Cause right now, currently in my business, I'm trying to design a new um, kind of pattern for the hat. Okay. And so we're going to do some different testing with three different designs. And I can go into that if you'd like, but 
I want to get some market testing so I know what I'm doing. It's yeah. going to be worth my time and, and the money so given we're in the lean startup stage. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you post, we're posting those surveys and then people fill them out and then we ask them if they want to kind of learn more about our journey and kind of be added to our marketing list. And so I've tagged my Instagram to try and build a following there, but then also um, add them into my marketing strategy mm -hmm. or my marketing funnel. And I've probably gotten close to 400 just purely through Strava. Like he's yeah. had the blessing with him is he's had, he's part of the track team here or yes. cross country, sorry. Yeah. And his coach sent out everything to like all the different uh, GMAC, I think it is. Oh, wow. To the GMAC yeah. people. Yeah. And so okay, he's gotten, I was like, that's even better. That's so amazing. he's, he's yeah. had that connection too. So, wow. And yeah. that's awesome that you guys are working on like almost the same level and like you guys are probably in the same step the exact right same. now yeah. and going up together and that's cool and then We're you can share collab, like so. he's geared towards more like cold weather which mm -hmm. is a different angle than yours you're going after a niche where you would do all different products mm -hmm. he's going after cold weather stuff yeah um what kind of running is he into more is he a little more short distance Cooper? so it's it's yeah. weird because like some people he so he i think he's he's 10k Okay. Um, so is that six miles, something like that? Uh, and yeah. so he's like cross country. And so in the mind of high schoolers and college students, that's the long distance Yeah. compared to like track, which is 200 meters. Mm -hmm. Now mine is, mine is like, act like really long. So yes, he's long distance, but it's perspective really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then I know he and I talked about, um, we had a funny video idea where it was like you running and it's like, oh, you have your cool hat, mm -hmm. but your gloves suck. <laughs> then he's running. He's like, man, these gloves are great. Yeah. My hat sucks. And it's like you guys see each other and we're like, that'd be good. What? I love and that. Then, yeah, I think that'd be fun. Fun collab whenever we get to that point. For sure, um, we definitely want to do collaboration. We we're talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And and Ko, the pitch. Speaking of connections, the pitch connected us. So like he, I think he was, yeah, he was literally at like the after party dinner thing. And he was like, hey, I was like, go talk to that guy. He's perfect for you. Wait, so that was the first time That's, you guys met was at the pitch I, party thing? Maybe like we said hi or introduced each other. But before that, I didn't know him. Huh. And I knew that he was on the pitch because I watched the pitch to prep for the pitch last yeah. year. And so I saw oh, the first pitch was Cooper. I was uh, like, this is perfect. And he's doing yeah. running gloves. So I was like, even better. And I knew that he's a senior, so I thought he graduated. But now he's back for a fifth year to do some entrepreneurship stuff uh, yes, for yeah. masters. So Yeah. 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 Huh. That's it. Yeah. Cause, uh, he was on the leadership team for the Q organization mm -hmm. with me. Yep. So he was helping with a lot of the actually running the pitch. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah I know, uh, he, uh, I'm trying to think. I know he's also diving into different colors. Are you looking to do different colors with your stuff? Just mm -hmm. expand a bunch of different ranges. Yeah. So that, so I'm going to do three different, three different, kind of patterns okay. uh, to do, like I said, different testing. So I'm going to do the, a different color. My market shows that they want like 70% says they want like a different color. That's like earth tone. So I'm thinking like mm. a burnt orange, Ooh. something like that. And then I'm going to do, um, a kind of a fun pattern. So do you know what like chicken legs or Boa is those two companies? If not, no worries. No, I don't. It's just they're two different running companies, hmm. but their whole thing is the aesthetic of the shorts and the socks and things like that are like fun little things. So like there's ghosts or there's cows or there's like steaks on it. So it's, it's really, it's in their themes like Christmas. Yeah. So both those companies do that. And I'd love to do that for my hat. Yeah. So I know that runners love coffee. So I'm like, let's put some like to-go coffee mugs on the on the hat, like just multiple around it and just make it look silly. Yeah. Cause it's, I think f I might just be getting these numbers wrong, but like 30% said they wanted that. Okay. And then the last one is definitely going to be a, a niche one even further. So I'm the retro stuff's coming back. So like the baggy clothes, mm. a lot of the style for retro is coming back. And so I want to do like a corduroy running hat and have that pattern on it and then have my like name across the brim of it in like a different, like old, old school font. Uh, and so it's going to look like corduroy, but it's still going to be the same like polyester material that my yeah. hat is. So that all of them are going to have the same like looks features, but just those different colors. Different designs. Yeah. Interesting. And have you, with 
like running long distance like that, is there any issues with needing to have like reflective material on clothing? Will that be a part of what you make as well? Yeah, no, that's a great point. So a lot of the stuff you see, like even the shorts and the hats currently, they have like little tidbits that are, are reflective. And so that's something I'm going to add on. Okay. There's two main things that I'm going to add to it. It's going to be reflective stuff. And then we're going to add kind of like an elastic string that comes out of the pocket that has a clip mm. at the end to clip on your key fob or your house key. Oh, interesting. Okay. So just in case, like this is a backup plan. The hat yeah. already holds these things, but if it does fall out, you don't lose it. And it's just yeah. right there. It's just hitting you in the ear and you should put it back in and hmm. you're good. So. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I know, uh, you, one day, oh, you handed me the hat. I saw it before the pitch. Yeah. And I, I had it like in here, I was wearing it a little bit, mm-hmm. but it, I like it. It's, it fits really well. Yeah. And I, I don't generally run with a hat. I've uh, mainly because I don't run much. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't done it. I mean, I uh, I actually was very consistent over the summer with running. I was uh, up in the morning pretty early because my family was just earlier rising family. Mm-hmm. So I would just like get up. We have a driveway. It's like a mile long. I'd run it. Oh, that's a few times. Um, but then I went to England in June. Oh, way, that's and so cool. I went for a week. I was visiting um, uh, missionary friends, but also helping mm-hmm. them. Uh, do video work for them and then they showed me kind of their mission which is through a coffee shop actually which is Mm -hmm. interesting coffee's growing more in england Mm -hmm. and uh, their mission is through uh, relationships then they'll share the gospel but uh did they start with tea there like that coffee shop you're talking about no they just went straight for straight for coffee that's interesting because there is tea shops but they went straight coffee and there's like a bunch of people and there was a lot of austrians okay and that's they were in bister it's not spelled like that it's B I C E S T E R. That's so odd. Bister. Okay. It's about an hour north of London and an hour south of um, Birmingham, okay. I believe. And uh, yeah, so they started with that, but um, it's such a walking culture over there. Hmm. Like you walk everywhere. So you walk and then you take the trains. Like there are cars, mm-hmm. but uh, there's many times where I walk a mile just to like, hey, we're going to go to the store. Walk hmm. a mile. Go there. Or we're going to go to the train. It's like a mile and a half, but we're going to walk there. Hmm. But uh, I got there on Wednesday, and then Thursday evening for dinner, they were like, hey, there's a 5K that they do every Saturday morning here. <laughs> they are like, you want to do it? I was like, sure. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> so I got, up, I got up Friday morning at like mm-hmm. 6 and ran the 5K. Oh, man. I ran the track. Yeah. That was probably a mistake. No. But then I got up Saturday morning. I was like, I did it again. Nice. And it was fun. Nice. I enjoyed it. The only thing was, whenever we started the race, everybody was really close together. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'd never like trained for running a race. So I couldn't do my full strides. So I was stuck doing little strides. Yeah. I, cr- I like double cramps. Oh, man. For like the first mile, I ran a 12 minute mile. Okay. <laughs> so bad. And then I, I caught up. I did two eight minutes. Nice. Which it, the it cramps don't like, help at all. Yeah. yeah. So that was like, it was like torture for the first mile. But yeah. then I hit the last uh, two point. I think a 5K is like 3.1. I deal with miles. I don't deal with kilometers. Yeah, so it was uh, it was fun. Nice. So I got the highest of my age group. You did? <laughs> There's like 200 racers, yeah, but nobody my age because they're anyway. all still asleep. <laughs> it was like 9 a.m. Was it like cold there? I feel like it's like, in my mind, London is super like foggy and cold. Like it, I'm imagining like Peaky Blinders it style. It generally is. I was there for the one week in the entire year where it didn't rain. Oh, that's so nice. It didn't rain. It was perfect weather. It was like high of 75 to 80, which is really warm for over mm-hmm. there. Like in the no, 80s, sure. they're like, it's hot because there's no air conditioning really. Yeah. Um, well, the funny thing is you said yeah. they walk everywhere, but it's like raining and foggy. And Now that's a stereotype. I get that, but yeah. still it's... No, that's true. It, it, it rains yeah. a lot. And it's it reminds me of like Pennsylvania rains a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I'd argue... Washington State is very rainy, yeah, but Oregon, also Pennsylvania, Washington, it's yeah. very similar. Um, minus, we'll get more snow in Pennsylvania. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just you're used to being wet a lot. Mm-hmm. It's like whenever it rains here, it's like, oh man, I'm definitely very used to this. I get like it rains all the time in Pennsylvania. I don't have a rain jacket. Like I, I'm from Kansas, and we got tornadoes, and we got rain, rain once in a while. But I don't even have a rain jacket, which is kind of stupid because we live in Ohio now. But yeah, especially with the wind. Have you seen a terrible. tornado, like, uh, off in the distance? So the funny thing is, Kansas is known for having tornadoes. And so people are like, you're from Kansas? Have you ever gotten, like, in the middle of a tornado? Like, has your house <laughs> ever been? I was like, I've never seen one, dude. Damn. I mean, maybe from outside the state while I'm driving somewhere. But, huh. like, in Kansas, 
we've had tornado warnings. We've had all that type of stuff. But overall, there's like no tornado that was significant enough to affect me. So hmm. I was like, there's the, and I live right there in the middle. Like, yeah, I live right in, the in belt. Kansas. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, my high school is in Missouri. So I drove 25, mi- 25 minutes to uh, my high school every morning. So I'm right there on the border. Interesting. So was it like a private, like Christian school? Yeah, it's a private Christian okay, school. Okay. So you, that's interesting going across the state line. That's cool. Yeah. So every time, now I never really used Google to drive to Kansas, but every time you cross that border, it's like you've entered Missouri. And so I would have heard that every morning. But Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I know my uh I was homeschooled like all all throughout and uh but my cousins they drove like forty five minutes for not across state lines, but they yeah. drove a while to go to Christian school. So it was interesting. What did you do? Because the stereotype of, of homeschoolers is they're like antisocial and they can't talk to people. Mm-hmm. You clearly can talk to people. Yeah. So like what did you do outside of school to help like get you to the point where you're like running a podcast? Yeah. Like were there things that you were a part of? Um, so the first thing I would say, I never really hung out with other kids too much. Like I was always with my family up until age nine. Okay. Like there's like some families where you have like your family friends, you've known them since you were five. I was literally in my house as yeah. a kid. Um, in fifth grade about, I joined a homeschool co-op and that was where i say my first actual friend group started Mm -hmm. and i like i went to that co-op all throughout the rest of my time and so my younger siblings have been in that since they were like babies so they've truly had like the friendship the whole time and so that's only once every two weeks though so every friday for three hour every other friday for three hours we'd meet and have like classes Mm -hmm. it's mostly just social time yeah but that was really helpful because then i got like in with those people and actually like had them as friends and would like hang out with them. Um, and then from that in high school, freshman year, uh, we were kind of moving around different churches trying to find one. Cause the one that we originally went to when I was a kid, uh, just didn't work out. And so we joined this one church, uh, Greystone and I got involved with the youth group, like started leading worship sophomore year. Wow. And so that That's was awesome. really big for me just being able to, that was where I kind of learned just to be in front of people all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say the biggest things for social was actually soccer. Mm -hmm. Um, I did cup level for seven years and then academy. I played for, uh, you know, BVB, like Borussia Dortmund. Mm -mm. So they're a German club in the Bundesliga. That's where Christian Pulisic and a couple like of the pro Americans played in Mm -hmm. the academy and they brought their international academy to Pittsburgh. So I played there for a year and a half, um, until my junior year of high school. And so, yeah, I, uh, I had played soccer since I was six. So I did like AYSO. I went to do travel up like in the town where my co-op was. Mm -hmm. And then I did uh, the academy and cup cup soccer in Pittsburgh. So I drive an hour to practice and an hour back, like two or three nights a week. And then we have our game on the weekends. So then whenever it came, sophomore, junior year um, is kind of where I started to get, not, not sophomore year, but the end of my junior year, I started to get a little burnout with soccer because I traveled so much. Mm-hmm. Over that winter, I was practicing four nights a week because I had a futsal club I played for. Mm-hmm. And then from January till June, I played 40 soccer games. Wow. And so it was generally one week. Every weekend would be like Saturday we'd play at home in Pittsburgh. Sunday we'd play away in Columbus or Cleveland. Hmm. So it'd be a one-hour drive and then a three- to four-hour drive. And then we'd have one big tournament every month. That was like five or six hours. So it was just a lot. Do you play? You don't play for Cedarville, right? I don't, know. Okay. So I actually stopped playing on the academy junior year and didn't play in my senior year senior at all. Year. So I just because of the burnout? It was the burnout from the travel. I still love okay. soccer. Yeah, like yeah I, for sure. Um, I didn't do reserve, but most likely I'm going to try for reserve again in my sophomore year next year um, just because I enjoy the sport mm-hmm. and I can walk instead of drive an hour, yeah. which will be like really refreshing. Um, but yeah, I was just so much time like i had one day off a week where i was home that's crazy so every evening i was gone i thought i was committed with soccer and no shot yeah, yeah it was it was insane so it was it was amazing like the people i got to meet that's what really helped my social mm-hmm. is i met a lot of people a lot of foreign kids mm-hmm. um like um one of the guys on the soccer team here um so there's eco he plays on the soccer team um 
um, I knew of him. I didn't really know him, but there's Charles Sanchez. Shout out uh, C H M Fit, but uh, he uh, he's on the reserve team and he played with me for a year. And so he's from yeah. the Dominican Republic, and I drove him to practice every. Oh, so you really his uh, private school was on the way to practice, so I'd pick yeah. him up and take him, and so I just got to meet a lot of different people, and I think that socially soccer was the biggest thing for me. Okay, because I was captain for my all except for the first year cup. So I just learned leadership skills. Um, so yeah, it was definitely the soccer and sports. And I only played soccer, so. Yeah. But yeah, that was probably the biggest thing for me socially. For sure. I think <coughs> sports is always like a good avenue for that. Because I remember doing, like being a junior in high school, having my, my senior friends be the captain, seeing how they led. And then like next year knowing like, don't do that or do this. Yeah. And just to the ways to deal with like guys who just don't want to run the laps or like mm -hmm. lagging behind, even though you know that they can do it. Like just how to deal with those situations. Yeah. So like there's a lot of de-escalation is the right word, but knowing how to deal with the situations in a way where they don't hate you and they still respect you, yeah. but they understand that like that's your position and you need to, you need to do those laps. So I think that the leadership and then of course the social side of that is, is definitely learn through sports a lot of times. Yeah, understanding how to, as a leader, give constructive criticism that doesn't make you seem like you're, like, being a dictator over them. Yeah. But you're trying to actually help them and, um, like, push them. Because, mm -hmm. like, instinctually, yeah, you don't really want to get pushed in that way. But well, it's, it's hard when you know him, too. Yeah. Like, if you, if there's a guy a year older than you telling you what to do, like, there's that disconnect that a lot of people do have. Yeah. And to be able to say, hey, man, we're friends, but at the same time, like, Let's get to it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I know, I forget what year it was. I think it would probably be my sophomore year. Um, it was when I was still for my original club. It was called Century United. I'm like, uh, I was like, I got so mad when practice, I started crying. Mm -hmm. I was so mad. At, like, everybody was goofing off mm -hmm. um, and just didn't seem very serious, especially since we had come off of, like a really annoying loss. And my coach just pulled me aside. He's like, I mean, sometimes if you feel like you're being too overbearing and you're getting frustrated with it, you just need to learn how to have fun with it as well. And then maybe they'll follow you in that way. Mm. And I really just didn't go like carefree. I just was like, all right, just learn how to have fun and just be fun. Mm -hmm. And through that, we actually, that's when we went on one of our runs of like not losing for a while and just learning how to not be overbearing um, but still push everyone and just enjoy the sport. Well, you know how to have fun. Yeah. Like, like you said, the dictator is always like go, 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 mm -hmm. and kind of dealing with that situation in more of a harsh manner. Yeah. But when you can have fun and then be able to transition that fun into, all right, guys, we've been, we've missed these like fat, like past 10 shots. Like I know we're goofing around, but let's actually try and practice these shots. Yeah. So like to be able to go back and forth is super, super crucial in that leadership position. Yeah. Yeah. To balance it. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I've, it's definitely helped me with just being here. Like I'm helping, um, with Q, um, helping, um, with my team specifically the Q team We're uh, we're actually planning most likely on doing the pitch this like you February. personally and do not me oh, okay. personally but my team in the oh yeah the, the Q org, organization sure. um we are uh i'm not going to say exactly what we're going to do we're mm -hmm. doing a non-profit and it's really exciting is it with cooper no so okay. cooper is for... with um maria and luke i believe they're doing um maria and luke. Okay. or it's mariah excuse me yeah. mariah and luke they're doing um, their idea. And then I'm with, uh, these, uh, three other girls. Um, and it's just a really exciting project and they're all very, um, I think it's Cooper's girlfriend is in my group. And oh, so sweet. she's, okay. um, she's very passionate about what we're doing mm -hmm. and everyone on my team, all hardworking. So I th I'm going to be, I'm excited because we've found like our niche. We have found our target audience that the nonprofit will help slash like we can find funds for. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think it'll actually like be le like legitimate. I think that the really cool thing about that organization is I said this in, so I think the reason I'm just going to go back a little bit. Yeah. The reason why the, the news thing went out originally was because somebody here wrote an article. And then I think the main like marketing guy at Cedarville pushed that out to his contacts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the main reason why the news went out. But the reason why I say that is in that article, I talk about how a lot of times in 
the school of business, we're, we're taught a lot of theory mm -hmm. and KO is all about pro being practical, which is so, such a nice, like, balance. Um, yeah. Balance. Great word. And, and so having that theory to then apply is crucial. Mm -hmm. And I've had that experience. Like a lot of the stuff I learned in KO's class, like I literally turn on my laptop in class and fix this one thing that was on my website that he said don't have. Yeah. So to be able to do that is crucial. And I think the main thing that I l love about the Q org is y'all are all practical. Yeah. Like Ali Cooper and um, some of the other guys who are kind of leading that up. Yeah. You are like making it all practical, yeah. like split them up into the groups, find your passion. Let's make this happen. And so to be able to have that practical side to then kind of balance, like you said, with the theory learning classes mm -hmm. is I think one of the best things you can do to actually make something happen. Yeah. hundred percent. Like we don't just meet as an org and talk about stuff. It's just like, Hey guys, we have no announcements today do thing go mm -hmm. and work and uh that's like what we do and mm -hmm. are you in a team with q no so i love the organization like i said but the amount of commitment that they wanted was something that i just couldn't provide yeah. like if i'm going to do something i'm going to go all out and i'm not going to let my lack of commitment affect somebody else yeah for sure and so i was just like man i'm I think it's great what you're doing, but I'm I'm gonna focus on school and running my business. And yeah, yeah. Well, you already have your own business, yeah. So that's like I'll have to figure out like if I'm gonna be able to. There's a lot of things going on, like mm -hmm. doing that nonprofit, hopefully, and then um, working with Carrie and working with the school business. Um, it's been awesome, like we're uh, being able to do the social media for them. Um, that's a sweet gig. Yeah, it's a great yeah. gig, and it's just great collaboration. Like I've been able to work with everybody in the IBC. Mm -hmm. which has been super fun. They're all great people. And they just had their uh, presentation like last week, this yeah, week. Yeah, I saw. Um, and I heard it went well. Um, being able to work with all the orgs. So mm -hmm. I just uh, posted out a video today, actually, now that I think about it, um, with the uh, investment org mm -hmm. at Cedarville. And then, um, yeah, then it's just like you and then like the actual other individual businesses that are uh, being run. I want to start, hopefully in the spring, we can start pumping out um, case studies about Cooper and you mm -hmm. and... Um, I know Eco has uh, Evolution Parts um, doing uh, electric vehicle parts, wow. and which is do good, doing very well. Like he's doing really well with it. So it's it's his own business. Yeah, it's his dad has a electric um, car dealership in the Dominican. Oh sweet! And so they already have connection with like Tesla and those companies. Oh wow! And so he, um, since he has those connections, there's no the largest like online electric vehicle parts inventory is like seventy parts like hmm. 70 and they're mostly used interesting his is like thousands because he has cool. access to all the used new stuff from mm -hmm. tesla because they just have the, that connection. the contacts so he is like the the one mm -hmm. which is, makes it like so perfect for the market and i think for those those new parts i think it's crucial because of those like if you think of an old school car like you can just source that part and then pop it in but you need new stuff when it comes to technology yeah. because i don't think it'll run as f effectively and there's more of that kind of i don't know reliability that goes down if you use a used part so having yeah. that and especially in this huge growing market with elon doing all his stuff yeah to then be paired with them yeah you're like clipping yourself onto a rocket ship and going yeah. to the moon. and just to even help people who like if your electric car breaks down mm -hmm. like i've heard it's like months it's before so you can get a part so long. and so it's just quickening like uh speeding up that process is it direct to consumer um yes i believe so i okay. think it's mainly geared towards dealers but it's not specific mm -hmm. like consumer can't buy it and like fix it themselves for those mm -hmm. who like to work on cars but his main thing is like probably working with dealers mm -hmm. and like if they need a part for a car like they can send it to them within a week that instead of like four months or whatever yeah so yeah cool. what are the other um Orgs doing? It. Can you actually say not org? Sorry, the within the Q School org, the mm -hmm. other groups. Can you hint at what they're saying, what they're doing? Um, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, my group is doing a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, Cooper's group, I know they're doing. Um, it's a Christian ministry business type okay. thing. Um, so it's business, not nonprofit. Uh, there to make profit, but to help others mm -hmm. specifically within the Christian field. I don't even. His is a great idea. I know his idea. And yes, that's, it's good. I'm excited for yeah. that. Um, and then, hmm. Oh, Zach is on a team, um, yeah. from, uh, digital marketing. 
Theirs is. I didn't uh, know he was in the org. Interesting. Yeah, he hasn't. He doesn't come to, like all the meetings, but their team meets up, and they're actually really working towards a product um, within the, I believe, the motorcycle realm. Okay. Um, specifically with uh, clothing, I think. Hmm. So that's going to be exciting. I don't know the exact. I know those two things. I don't know the exacts of like what they're doing, but there's always a kid that walks in. He's like. <laughs> bringing a bunch of motorcycle gear. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. But they're like, they're actually making moves and working there. And then I know there's another team. I don't know exactly what they're doing. Okay. Do you Um, know if any of the teams are going to do the pitch? I know know your team, my my team and Cooper's team. Okay. I think Cooper, they're going to try to, um, I think the other team, um, since it's specifically like clothing for motorcycle stuff, they need to go through the similar situation as you. It's like, they're not going to be able to do it this, uh, spring and if they mm-hmm. continue on with it, it may be next fall. Yeah. Just to see how like all the um, actual designs take, mm-hmm. how long they take. So well, it's so difficult because to get your idea to then something in hand, to be able to communicate with somebody, is something I like underestimated. Mm-hmm. I had to do a back and forth for a month to get the idea communicated across, to then have them send me a product. Yeah. And then to do that with five different manufacturers, to get five different samples, yeah. I underestimated that so hard. Yeah, like, I just, there's a lot that goes into it. To get a sketch that you send them, to them giving you a product in hand, mm. that's a long process. How and, long, like, from whenever you started draw? did you draw it yourself, kind of? Yeah, so on my website, I have, like, the prototype and then the hat next to it. Okay. That's actually my second prototype. The first one, I don't have posted, but. Yeah. Actually, it's on my Instagram. Yeah, I saw it on your Instagram yeah. last night. Yeah. So, how long from whenever you were drawing it till like you actually got physical hat products prototypes? Mm-hmm. How long was that? Yeah. So I think it was. So I did the two. I did the I did the first drawing, liked it. Reached out to the manufacturer, said, "Hey, can you do this?" Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Yeah, we can." But what if you did this? And we went back and forth. And then came up with a second prototype with the with the manufacturer, okay. and then sent that out. And then probably like two months okay. from from concept to in hand mm-hmm. the product, mm-hmm. and then from there deciding the manufacturer and working with them. Okay. So it's a it's a long process, and that's for that's for a, a very simple concept. And the main I didn't really go into this, but the main thing behind the name of my company ultra light running is my first product i wanted to do was a headlamp for ultra marathon runners Mm -hmm. like that was my that's what i wanted to do and so that's where the light comes in ultra is kind of a given but the light i i designed that uh, in cad so it's just like a 3d rendering software designed that had a friend 3d print it and so i had it in hand to give to a manufacturer actually it's a product designer and I went back and forth with them, and they quoted me $25,000 to get, like, this headlamp in hand to then hand to a manufacturer to then pay for the manufacturer to get inventory. And I was like – and then on top of that, this headlamp – I can't really go into details because of – it requires – this headlamp requires a patent. And so that was going to cost me another $25,000. Wow. So at a bare minimum, it would have been around fifty grand. So like get this thing in hand protected to then not even have inventory. Mm. And I was like, well, I can't do that. So, and I was always taught, I'm big Dave Ramsey guy. I was always taught not to take loans out. So I wasn't going to take a loan out for something that was that risky. Yeah. And so I was like, I, I love this concept. I love this business model. Mm. Let's pivot and let's go towards something that I can manufacture that yeah. is kind of within my budget. Okay. And so that's kind of how I got to the hat. And that's also how I came to the name. Okay. So, and then would you see yourself once like the hat keeps going onward and you're building up a uh, revenue that you would dive into hopefully getting the light out. That's, that was the whole, whole reason for the hat okay. was I wanted to create capital to invest into the, the headlamp. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I wish my headlamp could be the next product that I release. I don't think it will be. Mm-hmm. I think there'll still be more clothing stuff. Yeah. Um, like I said, with that level of quality that's required for these distances Yeah. to then just keep building that capital to then invest and eventually bring that to the market and hmm. completely blow it out of water because there's nothing nothing on the market that's equivalent to what I designed and as effective as what I designed for ultra marathon runners. Okay. So. Yeah, maybe that's like 
by the time you would actually come out with that headlamp, you would have the, like, the following. For sure. Where you can actually, like, sell it and it'll actually get into the industry. Because, like, you're still mm-hmm. up on the startup stage, so you're getting revenue, but your brand isn't known. So th- by yeah. then, you'll actually, like, have your brand. Well, that's the whole thing that K.O. says. He's like, you can buy a company, build a company, or borrow a company. And I'm huge into borrowing, as I'm doing right now. Uh, but also, like, building it. Like, yeah. this whole thing is to try and build that following to market test. Because I was, I read a book called um, It's a Million Dollars in 12 Months. Not that that's my goal, but just to get that mindset to where yeah. I, was, I was always taught to, if you're going to fail, fail fast so that you can learn from it. Yeah. And so to be able to fail fast enough to know when to jump ship is crucial. But that book said that to be able to do these type of things, you need to have a be able to market test. And to be able to market test, you have to have an audience. Yeah. And the audience has to like stand behind you. Mm-hmm. And so, like, hopefully I'll be able to market test once I have that following in the headlamp gets yeah. to that point. That's the whole idea behind it. Nice. Yeah. That's exciting. Well, we've done our time. It's been, like, almost an hour. So thank you so much for hopping on. It's exciting yeah. to talk about. And uh, just that you were on the news. Um, yeah. I wanted to get this in. Um, but, guys, check out Aaron on socials. It's Ultra Light. And so is that spelled U-L-T-R-A-L-I-T-E? So Y-T-E. Y-T-E. Light, yeah. Ultra Light. Yeah. Okay. Ultralight, yeah. So yeah. Check out. him out that spelling everything will be down in the description thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you in the next one thanks for having me awesome dude that was sick yes we did it oh i love it